So if you're only 12% of GDP is in manufacturing to imprint that importance into the next generation, it takes extra effort. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to MTD CNC. You might recognize this guy. He's joined me a couple of times. Also, Aceta being fully famous, a brilliant company, automation. We have a couple of topics we want to talk about. Now, Robbie is definitely better dressed than me, definitely smarter than me. So you guys are in for a treat today, and we appreciate you joining in. The first thing we want to talk about in the world of automation is upscaling. And the reason we bring that up is I'm still getting regular conversations and comments of, Dull, dirty, dangerous. Robots are gonna take my job. No, they're not. We're just removing the mundane. We're taking you out of danger. Yep. But it still comes up regularly. And once we get past that stage of fear and move into the age of competence and moving outside of our comfort zone to learn something new, we get into the world of upscaling. And talking with some of your colleagues, one of my favorite topics of conversation is uh, when the car was invented and we took away horse and buggies, mm -hmm. but we threw a fit about it, right? And, and what about when computers came along? We're like, oh, computers are gonna take my job. We always do this as humans. So talking with you, knowing your expertise, knowing your legacy in this industry, let's talk about upscaling and what it means to you. Yeah, hey Tony, always great to be with you. So I appreciate the invite for this. Um, always great to see you uh, outside of our home state. But uh, yeah, upskilling is, a, is something that every US manufacturer is going to have to go through one way or another. Um, unfortunately, the pipeline of talent that comes into manufacturing, US manufacturing is nowhere near as big enough to, to really cover the demand, the, up, the current and the upcoming demand. So well, what do we need to do? We, we need to make sure that the employees we have today, how do we bring them to the next level? And how do we make that transition as easy as possible? So there's a lot of organizations out there that offer help for that. Whether that's industry representatives, uh, companies like FANUC, um, we certainly at ACETA have a ton of training programs that we, we offer to our customers. Um, but then there's also a lot of technical colleges um, that are out there. You don't need to go necessarily get a four-year degree in engineering or in whatever, um, chemistry or whatever that is, to work in the automation industry and support US manufacturing. Uh, in fact, most uh, current uh, job shops that we know that automate, they upskilled their workforce from being an operator, from being someone that loads parts into how to operate a robot. And with that, you can triple your capacity. Basically, if you think about it, each person has um, is, is basically one shift, one person, you can, you can make that person run multiple machines, multiple shifts with robots. And so any manufacturer in the United States that has the capacity crunch, has the work, doesn't have the people, is going to be looking at upscaling at a very rapid rate. Yeah, I mean, this is honestly one of my favorite topics. And, and when I first got into the world of, of MTD CNC, you were immediately someone I contacted because I wanted yep, to learn. The, yep. first, one of the first, I think, on the gun show, maybe mm -hmm. one or two on the gun show podcast. But I'm always learning from you. And almost everything you say, I will bring back up later in conversations mm -hmm. because I value it so much. And one of those conversations is exactly what you just said, where, I mean, as a machinist, I once was a machinist. Yep, I remember. You guys will determine how good I was at that. <laughs> uh, but one time I was a machinist and at max I could run one, maybe two machines yep. depending on cycle times at one time. And if we're able to run two, three, four entire work cells, not only maybe that, but being able to set them up to run through the nights and weekends when I'm not around, ultimately we're all profiting from that. We're creating, becoming more efficient, more effective, which means the company could put more money in their pocket. And hopefully if we're doing it right, mm -hmm. the employee gets to put more in their pocket. So this is a part of upskilling. And then something else I find fascinating because you mentioned school as well, Robbie, is a lot of the robotics folks like yourself mm -hmm. are looking at the world of video games and going, video games and automation oh, have a lot in common. Big you audience say? for yeah. us, yes. Would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? Sure, sure. I mean, the, the younger kids that we hire straight out of school, typically for a robot technician or a robot programmer, you have to have like a two-year technical robot degree. Um, and I can tell you, 
all of them grew up in that Xbox uh, PlayStation world and uh, are basically translating those passions now into the real world where we actually produce products. And uh, there is there is a, a, a big community in, in our industry that that has a lot of gaming uh, background. It's really fascinating to see that. And, and just the, the skill level that comes with it too, the, the way a lot of these folks look at things from a different perspective than you and I do that went to engineering, right, uh, is, is fascinating to me. Um, the other thing I, I wanna add to it too is that when you think of upskilling and the responsibility for business owners to their to their employees, because you mentioned, you know, hopefully we all make more money, including the employees. Well, it's it's also you creating an attractive workspace. Mm -hmm. You talk dirty, dull, and dangerous. Certainly, those are the, the big names that are out there. But there are so many other dangers that are in in the manufacturing world. And not just in the machine tool side, also in other areas, packaging, palletizing, you, you name it, right? So for, for a business owner, the, res the, the inherent responsibility to keep their employees engaged, engagement is a huge one, mm -hmm. and continue to help their employees to grow pr on, a, on a professional level, which will then help them also grow on a personal level. That's, that's a, a mandate that is becoming more and more important here in the United States. Well, you guys at Aceta, I've seen it firsthand, do an amazing job at allowing people to continue to grow. And mm -hmm. even here at Fabtech, you have more speakers here than any other company because of the amount of wisdom and growth and training that's evolved in Aceta. So kudos to you, first of all, for that. Oh. But I don't think we can talk about all of this upskilling without also bringing up the importance of the education side of things, mm -hmm. the awareness side of things yep. that working with as an integrator of FANUC, mm -hmm. you know how well FANUC does on the education side of things. Working with SME as you do, mm -hmm. you know that that's their focus as well. Would you mind elaborating on maybe how we can involve more people in manufacturing? What are some of the, the pathways to create that awareness? Mm -hmm. And also most importantly is just getting more people in it. So even though we've talked about labor shortage and automation, we still need people. Yep, yep. Oh, for sure, for sure. And it's it's interesting you mentioned that because when when you when you peel the onion back and you look at where does interest in STEM and then more specifically manufacturing start in a young person's life, it starts very early on. And it's, uh, as you know, I'm on the board of the SME Educational Foundation. So we look at data and we look at it, why are there you know, one fourth less female that are actually going to get a STEM degree than it is male. It's unfortunate. And we peeled that onion even further back and we're trying to figure out how do we get more interest in manufacturing for younger girls? And so it's like, you know, more, the Barbie movie is really popular right now. So how is this Barbie made? How do you make it in high production? How do you make it at a quality level that's required? And bring that back to middle schools. I mean, we have we have middle schools coming through our facility all the time. Middle school. Thank you for that, by the way. Looking, looking at, you know, really being interested in robotics. And then we hire these kids five, 10, 12 years later, you know? And, and that, that's a, I think it's a mandate that all of us integrators in the automation space have is to make sure that that pipeline of young interest in STEM is there. 19%, um, only 19% of graduates every year in the United States are in the STEM field. That needs to be almost double. Germany's at 36%. I just happen to know those numbers. That uh, is all fast. That, that, why do you think that we're at such a low number in comparison to other parts of the world? 70% of GDP in the United States is service industry. Okay. So only 12% is manufacturing. Huh. So that already tells you right there, the deficit that we have, it's massive. And so that is generational too. It's like, you know, if, if you're a lawyer and your dad was a lawyer, your kid likely is gonna be a lawyer. And if you're, if you're not in manufacturing, uh, it's much harder to Im imprint that passion into, into the next generation. So if you're only 12% of GDPs in manufacturing to imprint that importance into the next generation, it takes extra effort. Extra effort indeed. And I think there's a lot of groups, much like SME, much like ACETA, mm -hmm. who are doing what we can to raise that 12%. Now, you can confirm, deny, or just say that it sounds interesting, <laughs> the next number I'm gonna throw. But I heard a rumor that said, if we can get 
six percent of the U.S. American women's population mm -hmm. to join manufacturing, the labor shortage is gone. Have you heard anything like that? Yeah, it's it's right around that number. It's right around that number. It's so I'm not making things up today. You're not making it up. <laughs> Don't know exactly where you got that number from, but it is actually right on, it's right around on target. Yeah, six percent. So you and I both know we can talk forever, mm -hmm. and we will. For those of you who are interested, uh, do some more podcasting on these subjects because I value Robbie very much, much like all of you do who are watching. It's it's one of those moments we get where the behind the scenes conversations that we get to have, we get to broadcast to you as well. So we will talk more, but I'd like to close this out, Robbie, with. If you want to have a statement about upskilling, go mm -hmm. for it, of course. But mm -hmm. I really want to kind of pick your brain a little bit about the education and awareness side of things, from the SME side of things, from the ACETA side of things, and, and kind of just ask one more time, how can we all, people mm -hmm. who are watching mm -hmm. right now, people sitting in these chairs, because I don't want to just point fingers, you know, three come back at us when we point <laughs> the other way, right? So when we do that, how can we all do a small part or a large part to bring more awareness to manufacturing? Get engaged, get engaged uh, uh, and, and help out in your, you have to do it locally. Locally is where you start. We have two or three of our managers that actually teach at universities, teach at technical colleges. That's how you, that's how you get the passion out. So I think we all, if, we, if we're passionate about what we do, and I, and I know we are, but the rest of us, um, you can stop that passion by being afraid of, I don't have time, I don't have money, I don't have this, I don't have that. I, I feel that every organization should have an inherited interest in continuously building the next generation that will fuel our work, our, our companies, and with that, the United States. All right, last thing we're going to do before we close this out, just a little website shout out for Aceta because I know you mentioned middle schools coming in. There's going to be some teachers out there right now wanting to participate because automation, some people say it's the future. It's happening mm -hmm. now. If, in mm -hmm. fact, if you're not doing it now, you're falling behind. So a little website shout out for Aceta. Where can they find out more? Absolutely. Aceta.com, obviously. Um, just contact us. We will guide that information to, into the right hands. Locations we currently have is in Milwaukee. So if you're in the Milwaukee area, uh, look us up and also in Council Bluffs, Iowa in the greater Omaha area. So if you're a teacher out there, you have passionate kids, uh, if you're running uh, you know, a, a robot competition group or something, a team, please let us know. We're always happy to sponsor those and always happy to help. Good man, Robbie. Appreciate you so much. Your time Always, is brother. so valuable. So Always. when you share it with me, eternally grateful. This is my buddy, Robbie. This is Asita, <laughs> the best dressed man I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. We know how valuable time is. And when you share it with us, it means the world to us. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.